All right, welcome into the film room for the Packers defense against the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, a lot of points were given up this week, but that doesn't really tell the whole story. So I want to break down the defense, some of the problems that I noticed, but a lot of the stuff is correctable, and there are a lot of nice things that I saw in Jeff Halfley's new defense for the Packers. So hopefully, hopefully things are going to be much better on a field that doesn't have poor conditions. So we all know that the field was a problem for both teams, so we can't really use that as an excuse for the reason why the Packers lost. But there are certain coverages, like we'll talk about cover one to start, that make it more difficult if you don't have your footing. So let's start out with looking at some of these plays. All right, this defensive review is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to try to be more efficient with it. Don't have as many plays to talk about. So we'll start out focusing on Jair here at the top of the screen. This is the big touchdown that he gives up. So this is a cover one look. We've got a one high safety. You can see it's about 20 yards deep. And we got some underneath routes. So just quickly going back before I show the whole play, you're going to notice you've got man, man, you have your one high, right? So he's going to be center fielder. You've got man there, man here. And then Quay is man on the running back. And you're going to notice something that we didn't really do in the Joe Barry defense is we have a hook defender here, which is normal in a cover one, a hole defender there as a linebacker. But there's going to be a switch, right? So you're going to see Nixon. You're going to see McDuffie. They know there's a crosser. And instead of just following him across the field, there's going to be a switch, right? So there it is. And then Nixon becomes the new hole defender. So fundamentally, that's actually a pretty good job. But of course, with it being man coverage, you've got one-on-one. -on -one. Jair is going to get beat here by A.J. Brown. And we'll just go back to that because the reason why he gets beat, it's supposed to be man coverage. Your eyes should be linked with the receiver. But if you notice Jair's stance, right, he is kind of cheating with his eyes, right? He, once we get to the break point, it is essentially a double move. So his hips are square, but his eyes are no longer on AJ Brown. All right. So he's still looking at the quarterback and he's going to get beat because of that. Jalen hurts with a nice ball and Bullard isn't able to make it over to help Jair in that situation. And it's an easy touchdown for the Eagles. So again, we've got this play. Everyone was good except for Jair, and it's just his discipline, right? He's supposed to be in man coverage. He lets him get by, tries to recover, but the throw is too perfect for him to, to get back. So big touchdown for the Eagles. All right, here we've got another cover one. This one is going to be with a blitz, so you don't have a whole defender. It's just man across the board, and it's an easy underneath route for the Eagles, but we'll see essentially what goes wrong here. We know it's hot. All right, we've got a lot of pressure coming off the edge here. It's a five-man rush. You're going to have the four-man on the D-line rushing, and then you've got Nixon coming out of the slot. And you've got way too much separation here between Devontae Smith and Bullard. And you're essentially going to have Quay, who's man on Saquon. So if Saquon were to leak out, right, then Walker's going to have to cover him. But in this play, he doesn't, right? So you're going to see Quay. He's going to point out the crosser. But at this point, it's way too late. There's nothing you can do there. Right? You just have to kind of close the distance, but it's impossible to close that distance if you're trying to disguise the blitz. Right? So there's no way that Bullard is going to be able to make a play here in man. Right? If anything, because this is within five yards of the line of scrimmage, Right? this is two yards, Quay should be bumping this guy. Right? He should be making it a little bit easier for his team. Right, bump him so he it throws off the timing of the route. It gives your teammate a little bit more time, but instead he's pointing, and Bullard can't catch up, and it's an easy first down for the Eagles. And we'll continue with Quay Walker a little bit. He was struggling in the run game. Here we've got him having a good run fit, but he's not not able to make a play. And uh, part of the reason is his angle that he takes when he's going for this tackle. So. He's in the gap. He's ready to meet him, but 
he's going for his inside hip, right? If you'll notice his angle, he comes for his inside hip. What does that allow Barkley to do with his quickness? He's just going to be able to do a quick jump step and get outside. Meanwhile, if he's going for the outside hip of Barkley, he's got to try to cut inside and get behind his O-lineman that way. And it also forces him towards his team, right? You've got all these guys on the inside. So if Quay actually comes out and tries to get the outside hip, it's going to be a lot easier for the rest of his team. But instead, he shoots on the inside. Barkley gets an easy step to the outside, jumps out, easy touchdown for the Eagles, right? So he's tripping over his own feet. And again, easy touchdown. So Quay had a very, very rough game against the Eagles. All right here, we've got another play with the run fits. And just a massive seam there. We'll be able to see it easier from the end zone angle. But this is probably going to fall on McDuffie. I mean, he does what he's, he's meant to do. He has good recognition. So McDuffie sees the play. It's going off to the right. He sees this puller. So he's going to shift over due to that. But Quay Walker is not going to shift, right? So Quay is going to stuff this gap. And McDuffie is actually going to shift over here. And the problem is there's going to be nobody for this middle gap. So you can just see that seam open up. Eagles offensive line gets a nice push. But that's either got to be better recognition by Quay Walker, right? To notice that puller, but instead he's going to be going with his right guard, right? If he recognizes that pull, then he can fit that gap. But we also have McDuffie, who I think this falls more on because if he just keeps gap control here, he's got McKinney that is responsible for the other gap. Right, but he's going to jump over, and instead, that's going to part the Red Sea, and it's going to be a big run for the Eagles. And it makes it a much more difficult play for McKinney. Of course, another big issue was penalties. Here we've got an offsides by Kenny Clark. I'm not going to go through all the mental errors because this video would be an hour long if I did that. But the reason why he's jumping offsides here is because the Eagles, their snap count, was all based on this guy. The right guard, Mekhi Becton, would look for the leg of Jalen Hurts. He would lift it. Becton would tap the center. And then a millisecond later, the snap would happen. All right? So there, we've got the foot. There's the tap. And there's the snap. So instead of actually listening to the snap count or watching the ball, Kenny Clark is using anticipation there. He jumps off sides a little bit early, but the entire game, that's what the Eagles were doing for their snap count, for their cadence. So it's unfortunate that the Packers get a penalty there, but it's also just an elite player trying to get an edge to make big plays. And unfortunately, this time it didn't work. Okay, next we've got a blitz from Nixon, and he's going to lose contain, and I'm not sure why. All right. If you're blitzing, you're scraping off the edge, usually your responsibility should be the QB because that means you're going to have extra defenders on the interior to focus on that inside run. All right, so here we've got a free runner, which is normal in a read option, right? Hertz is reading this defender, so if he crashes, he's got to keep the ball and escape out. Right? And that's exactly what's going to happen, but he has no reason to crash because he's an extra rusher. Right? So if he just focuses on the QB, that forces a handoff on the inside, and you've got control with run fits from the linebacker if they push the ball inside. So he's going to break down, and that's already too late. And Hertz is able to get outside and break contain. And usually throughout this game, the Packers were playing a lot more passive with their pass rush. So people were complaining about not getting a, a pass rush. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. 
when I talk about the Rashawn Gary sack, but the game plan was to try to contain Hurts. And you had some players that contained better than others, but that's also a reason why you don't get a lot of pressure on Jalen Hurts in this game. All right, next play, we have two players make good efforts, but we also have a massive mistake by another player, and that springs a big play. So we'll go back to the beginning. This will be easier to see from the end zone angle, but we're going to have two individual efforts. We'll have one from Quay Walker with his recognition and one from Kenny Clark. So both of those players are going to recognize that there's a gap that opens up. Kenny Clark is going to spin and fill that gap. And then Quay Walker is also going to fill that same gap. So if two players are filling the same gap, that means there's going to be a gap integrity issue. There's going to be somewhere else that's going to be open. And whoever is responsible for that is going to be this man right here. That's going to be Wilson. And you're going to see he gets sucked too far in. And he's going to allow that cutback. So he leaves his gap responsibility. Gets pushed out. And there's a massive lane. I thought Wilson had a few good plays in this game, but this is definitely not one of them. So it shows how two players can make a good effort and there can still be a big play due to one other person not doing their job. That's why the Belichick era is always about do your job because you know if everyone has their gap responsibility, there should no be no way that they're getting through. So here you have what looks like a, a seam for Barkley, right? That's the original lane. So Quay Walker, he's going to try to meet him there. And Kenny Clark realizes how far the O-line has moved. So he's going to hit a counter with a spin. So both of them are trying to fill that same gap. And Barkley is able to use his shiftiness to bounce it out. And of course, you've got Wilson who gets washed out here because he decides to dive inside for some reason. If he stays on the outside shoulder, if he's able to stay at this spot, right, right near the hash mark, look at right where this run goes. Right on the hash. So if he's able to keep that outside leverage, it prevents a big gain and stops some of the momentum of the Eagles. Of course, we got to make it a little bit painful. I'm not going to draw anything up here, but we've got missed opportunities by the Packers. An easy pick six opportunity there. Right? This was a fake screen that they ran a couple times. All right, so they've got the little bubble screen. You got two going vertical. There's nothing there. Good defense by the Packers. Nixon playing off coverage a little bit, and then there's pressure, so Hertz is forced to throw it. And just by pausing it there, it looks like it's a pick, but goes through his hands. And as our kick return man, I have a lot of faith that this would be going 85 yards the other way for a touchdown. And then, of course, the next missed opportunity, we've got Jair. This one could have been pass interference by A.J. Brown. Because he's basically hugging him the entire time. But for a DB, that's as free as it gets. That should be as free as it gets for an inter interception. Surprised they didn't call anything on that because we'll even see it from the other angle. Jair barking at the refs, but this is right in his lap. So he should be able to fight for that. And if we kind of rewind, you can see that he's already contact. Jair is there trying to get position, but drops the interception. And then we get to the actual interception by Jair, and he just makes a mental mistake. I don't know why he decides to do what he does. But here, we talk back to the mistake that he made in cover one, but this is just good recognition by him. Uh, he notices that A.J. Brown is open, and he's able to recognize that, so he's going to break towards A.J. Brown as Hurts is making the throw. He just needs to go down. He just needs to take a knee. But instead, he runs it out. 
and we have to start at the 14 rather than the 20. All right, next two plays, we're just going to focus on Xavier McKinney and the fact that this man is worth it already. All right, this is going to be a cover two, and we're going to see it's a little bit different than the cover two that was played in the past. It's going to be more of a match, right? So it's not going to be a vision defense, but it's a match defense. So we got the two high safety. Got McKinney playing up here. Got Bullard on the other side. And the eyes are on the routes, right? Under Joe Barry, they were on the QB. So we've got on the route here, on the route here, on the route here. McDuffie turned with the number two. So he's responsible for the number two that's coming out. And he is able to follow him. But McKinney is able to make a play over the top. So you've got one over, one under, bracket coverage. McKinney comes over, makes a play. So I think McKinney didn't show as much range on this play. But the next play, when he gets his interception, just look at how much range he has in order to make this play. All right, so you've got McKinney here. He's on the other side of the numbers right now. All right, Hertz is loading his arm, making a throw right now. All right, trying to get this seam route in the middle of the field. And if we'll notice, this is a Tampa 2. All right, so Tampa 2, you've got... The flats covered here. And then you essentially have two hook zones in the middle. And then you have a deep hook zone, which is following the, the middle of the field. So it's essentially a cover three. You've got two deep safeties. But then you have the linebacker that comes in at, at that middle read. And Quay Walker does a much better job. Again, his eyes on the receiver. All right, so he's going to wall him off on that seam. All right, so it makes it a more difficult throw for the QB. All right, so he's now that QB, because of the positioning of his linebacker, it's got to be a perfect throw in order to complete it. And Walker does a good job walling him off. And now McKinney has made his way from the numbers all the way across the field to the opposite hash and is able to make a nice interception. Get some nice blocks. And I think if Mylotta is not a former rugby player, that this is a touchdown. All right, so we'll watch it from the end zone view as well. You can see Quay Walker's eyes. That's not something that we saw. Think back to the Carolina game. You go back to my breakdown of the Carolina game. It, it was just not the same, right? So you now have match defense. He's able to wall him off, and McKinney can make a big play. So I know Packers walked away with a loss here in this first game, but there's a lot of tiny details that are being shown that make me a little bit more confident that this season is going to turn out just fine. All right, we'll hurry it up here. Just want to focus on Cooper, the rookie, and we'll see his run fits here. It'll be easier to see from the end zone angle. But we've got Cooper here on the right side. All right, and this is going to be a pretty good run fit because it is a very, very small gap, and he's going to meet the running back perfectly. So here we've got good gap control. We've got Wyatt taking up two blocks here, and then you've got linebackers with their run fits so we've got a, a nice run fit by both quay walker and cooper and look at how beautiful it is when each linebacker does their their own job all right short run move on to the next play all right here we've got him Coop, cooper coming off the edge all right with a nice swat so one of the things that i liked about him in his college tape was his speed his aggression Right. And he's able to come off the edge here and realize quarterback's got his arm up. As soon as the QB's loading, Cooper's arm is already getting up as well. All right, So he just gets his hand up. He knows he's not going to get there in time. And he's able to swat it away. So 
I like what I see from Cooper. I think he's still obviously young and they still need to get a little bit more trust in him. But I wouldn't be surprised by midseason if he's a full-fledged starter over Wilson or McDuffie. Probably more likely Wilson than McDuffie. Our next play, of course, we got a great defensive effort here in the red zone of the opponent. Amazing tackle. Great job by the defense to make a play there. And we've got how to play a read option a little bit better. And this is Preston Smith, the Wiley veteran. I think he does this a little bit better, mainly because of his length. Right? He's got long arms, and he stays square. Right? So he gives the option, essentially. He gives the look that he's kind of spilling inside. But he stays square, so he can still move out and make a play. Right? So because he got sucked in so far... Right? It's going to make Hertz think, okay, I need to pull this and get outside. And that's going to be beneficial for us because he recognizes that there's a puller and he's able to force Hertz back inside and they're able to get a nice team tackle. And then we've got the inconsistencies of Nixon. Sometimes he looks good, sometimes he looks bad. This is one of the times that he looks good. We got a designed bubble screen and just pay attention to Nixon up here, what he does to this block, right? Obviously they've got the numbers. That's why they call this screen. They're like, Hey, we've got a two on two. If we block that and we get outside, there's a lot of room to run, but Nixon instead is going to take a two on one, right? He's able to take and occupy two blockers. So the rest of the defense is able to flow. And notice, this is something else that I noticed during the game, but look at how aggressive the Packers are. It used to be very tough to tackle, but now you've got one, two, three, four guys that are all within five yards of the ball carrier, and they're ready to tackle. So I've got a lot of faith that we're going to be fine in terms of the efforts and the tackling, I just think that this field made it a little bit more difficult to play a defensive game. All right, last play is we got a little bit lucky. I think they they didn't call Wyatt offsides here. He does get back just in time, which I don't know if he was, he's got his head offsides there, gets back slightly. I think they were generous by not calling it offsides. And I think that gives... Gary, the jump he needs to get around Lane Johnson because Lane Johnson is a quality right tackle, one of the best in the league. You can see he's pointing for a flag. I don't think he expected this play to carry on. You can just see that in his head, right? He sees, he's looking over here. Ball is already in Hertz's hand, and Gary's got a jump on the outside. So this is going to be an easy sack. Probably one of the easiest that he'll have this season. But that'll be the last play that I'll talk about for this game. Just wanted to keep this a little bit shorter. I picked out some more key plays to talk about. I think in the end, the Packers defense will be just fine. I don't think it's going to be a disaster. Hopefully, they perform well against the Colts. Obviously, they've got a huge test with another running quarterback. So I wouldn't expect a lot of pass rush, a lot of pressure in this next game. And obviously the footing is going to be much better at home at Lambeau Field. They're going to be a lot more familiar with it. So I would expect a lot lower scoring game in this one. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.